Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Four Season Travelers. I have some exciting news today, but before I get started on the really exciting news, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So yesterday we went to, from Bloody Basin to Cave Creek, which is like, I don't know, 100 miles. It was a long ways off road. And this guy had the same King Shocks that we've had sitting in our truck now for a month. And I was gonna have them installed and I just decided to go down to the store and buy a couple metric wrenches I needed because everything's in Reno in my toolbox. Um, but we're gonna make it work today. We're out here tearing it apart. Yep, right in the middle of the RV park. We are switching everything out. And so the next time we go for a ride, I think maybe our bodies won't get beat up as much. And so we're pretty excited about this right now. So I don't even have a legit floor jack or anything. I have these uh, camper stabilizers that were sitting at my dad's house. And I brought a jack stand. So that actually worked really good. I'm gonna keep those with us because they're fairly lightweight and easy. Uh, so I got this thing out, I got the inner fender out, and I almost got this shock out already. Uh, and basically all we carry is just random crap over there. I got an impact wrench and basic set of tools and we're getting after it. So these are all the tools that we travel with all the time. We actually have a little bit more than this, but, um, and then he just went and grabbed just the few things that he needed. Oh. Bill Steen. Built Ford Tough, been on there 2,500 miles. Let me see. I'll make somebody a deal if they want them. <laughs> Anybody looking for them? They were selling for like 500, I think, a couple hundred. Oh dang. Probably give them away to whoever comes to pick them up. to take a quick break and figure out there's like an electrical burning smell going on so i'm inside checking but i think it's outside okay so it doesn't seem to be the rv so taylor thinks it might be a charger probably that impact wrench charger it's sitting in the sun and it just picked up my arm So obviously our channel is full-time RV life, but a big part of ours is off-roading. Uh, we had a UTV, we had a four-seat general that Taylor did all the cool stuff to, and it rode so nice. But we waited for three years for this Bronco, and so now that the Bronco's here, this is the new project. We sold the UTV, so now we're just gonna be off-roading this, so. But that's a big part of it, and why we go to the places that we go to is because there's off-roading, and this is also now my daily driver for the most part. McKenna's got the directions rolling over here, fixing their own off-road vehicle. I was running my impact wrench and I said, I'm, su I'm surprised I didn't summon another neighbor. Like, if I hear an impact wrench, I'm coming to see what somebody's working on. Always having a hard time lining it up, huh? Yesterday when we were on the trail, we were told that we are supposed to name our Bronco. We don't have a name for it yet, so if anybody has some good names, just drop them in the comments below. I'm trying to do this one without pulling the inner fender liner out. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Well, the problem is Ford, in their infinite wisdom, put a screw right here that holds this fender liner on. Oh, good lord. Which isn't easy to get in or out. So do you have to take the step off to get to that? No, I could get it, but it's tough. It was a pain in the ass to get back on, so I bent the fender liner out. Yeah, a one ratcheting wrench, I would have been done with these, but I'm too lazy to walk next door. I'm committed on my knees right here, so. Got her. Because they have bead grip technology. So you can run them with like no pressure and you won't pop this bead off. Versus like the standard Sasquatch wheels, they have that like bolt that goes around. Oh yeah. That you'd have to have bead locks. 
which aren't technically even street legal, and they leak all the time. Oh. Like true rock crawlers run like no PSI and bead locks. But I can run these way down and they won't come off. Okay, here's the stock, and then you go back here. This is now with the king shocks on the back. That's as low as they go. Probably different, about two inches different. So they're as low as they go right now, basically, from the factory. They're at that setting. So you'd loosen this and tighten the spring up and push your vehicle down, but then you're, you're making that spring harder as you go down. So you can only go so far down with that collar and so far up with your vehicle before you start losing rag quality. So that's why you put ours lower? Yeah, I wanted them as low as we can get it so the spring's nice and soft for the little rocks. Oh. But there's somewhere in there a happy medium, which we're gonna find. So we just have to test them out? Yeah, especially once they sag. They'll, they'll sag some, I'm sure. So you heard that from Taylor. Apparently you guys are gonna have to follow our page to see where we go next to try these babies out. Okay, so basically everything under here is unbolted, tie rods off, the sway bar is disconnected, uh, the shock's pretty much unbolted. So I'm gonna get my jack under there, jack it up and put the new shock in, take that one out. Okay, so there's our stock upper control arm. A lot of hammering and it finally came off this thing, but uh, that's the last one to come out. And then uh, basically I'm gonna lower that jack and pull that stock shock out of there. Okay, so there is the new King Shock loosely in place. Uh, it's kind of a disaster, but it's in there. Uh, I'm gonna bolt the shock up and then put our control arms on, which is what we pulled out a minute.
Okay, so here is our Baja kits, new control arms. Uh, that's what they look like next to the stock ones. I mean, there's a pretty big strength difference just from looking at them. These are the cheap ones too. They're uh, not the billet aluminum. They're boxed welded steel. Uh, but I didn't see much of a difference except you have to grease these every once in a while. And then uh, that's the big old trophy truck uniballs they call it. So you can get a little bit more suspension travel with them. We got the upper control arms in, the king shocks all mounted up. Um, we're just gonna finish bolting it up and that'll be about it for We'll see how the suspension settles. Uh, I took, I don't know, I started at 11 this morning. It's about 5.30 and we're done. So less than six hours. Shops wanted like 10 to do this same thing for some reason. Maybe they built to drive to the alignment shop or something. Still got to get it aligned. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It was pretty easy. No big hiccups. <laughs>